Welcome, symbol lovers, to another edition of Understanding the Symbols of Hieronymus Bosch. And this time around, we're going to be looking at St. Christopher by Hieronymus Bosch. And we're going to be examining it using our seven keys to understanding the symbols of Hieronymus Bosch. We've added a seventh. Look for paired symbols. But you can't read the symbols without knowing the story. And so, the legend of St. Christopher goes something like this. His name was originally Reprobus. He was a Canaanite giant and a fierce warrior. He decided to serve the greatest king there was. So he volunteered to serve the king of Cana. When he saw the king cross himself at the mention of the devil, he decided to serve the devil. He happened upon a gang of bandits, one of whom declared himself to be the devil. So Reprobus decided to serve him. But when he saw his new master avoid a wayside cross and realized the devil feared Christ, Christopher then went on in search of Jesus. He met a hermit who instructed him in the life of Jesus. When the hermit suggested a life of fasting and prayer, Reprobus replied that he preferred to do something useful. The hermit then suggested, because of his size and strength, Reprobus could serve Christ by assisting people to cross a dangerous river. So, quitting his fierce ways, he devoted himself to this service. After some time, a little child asked him to take him across the river. During the crossing, the child became heavier and heavier, and, fearing for their lives, Reprobus cried out, Why are you so heavy, child? The child replied, You had me on you had on your shoulders not only the whole world, but him who made it. I am Christ your king, whom you are serving by this work. And with that Jesus blessed Reprobus and delivered him to the safety of a nearby spring, according to our symbols by Bosch here. And from that day onward, he was no longer called Reprobus, but Christopher, the Christ-bearer. He was later beheaded in 251 AD, and that was the year that Anthony the Great was born. Hmm. So keep all that straight. Now we're going to break out our seven keys of understanding the symbols of Hieronymus Bosch. And the first one we're going to break out is notice the negative. You just heard the story of St. Christopher, but in the painting you don't see um, any of his former soldiering. You don't see the King of Cana or the bandits. Uh, the only mention from the story that you actually see in the picture, other than carrying Jesus, is that little hermit monk down there. And you'll notice that Christopher is enormous in comparison to the monk. I keep making the mistake of calling him a monk. He is not a monk, he is a hermit. He might lead a monk-like existence, but he is not a monk, he is a hermit. Now let's look at the paired symbols. You're really only looking at two symbols here, but they're two composite symbols. The main symbol is the composite symbol of St. Christopher. You know it's St. Christopher only because he is paired with the child Jesus and that he has that uh, walking stick that he leans on. Uh, otherwise, he's just a man standing in muddy water, and the baby Jesus by himself is simply the baby Jesus. It's not until you combine the two that he becomes Saint Christopher. So that's just one composite symbol. And the other composite symbol is everything around him, the world of Saint Christopher, and how he relates to it and how it relates to him. So the rest of the painting is a supportive commentary on the life of St. Christopher. So we just have 
two basic symbols here. We'll do follow the money real quick. And as you can see, Christopher has no money. He's doing this for free. Uh, and so and because we think like Evianites, he's doing this good work just out of the goodness of his heart. He is not mixing God and money. So for this reason, he would be a very positive icon for Ebionites. But the composite symbols are also a series of paired symbols. So for instance, with the symbol for St. Christopher, you have not only is St. Christopher paired with Jesus, but also that that fish is paired with Jesus. Uh, and uh, they both have red robes. So this shows the unity between St. Christopher and Jesus. Jesus died a martyr's death, and St. Christopher here is going to die a martyr's death. So they both get red robes. So again, they're both closely linked. And Jesus has got his cross in his hand, and St. Christopher has got that walking stick that's going to sprout those leaves. And Jesus said, pick up your torture stake and follow me. Read the Bible. And that's what St. Christopher has done, only he's not carrying a cross around. He's carrying that walking stick. Walking sticks in artwork of Hieronymus Bosch always represent a follower of Christ, at least to some degree. Notice the body language. St. Christopher is moving from left to right. Therefore, his back is turned to everything on the left. And this works the same way as it worked in the Temptation of St. Anthony by Hieronymus Bosch where we find our hero, St. Anthony, with his back turned to all the weird goings on behind him. And the same thing holds true for Christopher. He's turning his back on that symbol of the man hanging the bear. So what is the man hanging the bear? Well, we know it relates directly to St. Christopher, because this is a painting about St. Christopher. It didn't get there accidentally. It is part of a composite symbol to support St. Christopher. And so this is telling the story of his life. But it's telling the story that the important part of the story that Bosch wants you to know. So what is it? Well, it's exactly what it looks like. What does it look like? What is a bear? A bear is a ferocious animal. And what was St. Christopher? St. Christopher was a mercenary. He would go to work for anyone who he saw fit and was willing to kill in their behalf. He was a ferocious person. He was like an animal. He was like a bear in his past life that he's leaving behind him. And by publicly not only embracing the teachings of Jesus, but doing good works now to make up for his ferocious past, he is publicly hanging his bear. The bear that he used to be is no more, and he wants everyone to know he is hanging his bear, his violent past, out for everyone to see. It is a, a defining feature of his life, and hence it is a symbol here. So the symbol of the hanging bear is meant to be a contrast. That was the bad old St. Christopher in contrast to this new, blessed, good St. Christopher. And another image of contrast is St. Christopher and that monk. And we see very clearly that we see our monk standing, but he's also in parallel with that fish that 
Christopher is carrying. You can see we are meant to compare the fish, which is a symbol for Jesus, with the monk, and compare them, the monk with Saint Christopher. So now we'll look at the symbols surrounding the hermit to see what we can tell about him. When first off, we can see he's to be compared to the fish, and the fish is a symbol for Jesus, but there's that gulf, there's not an overlap between the two, there is a separation of the two. So he doesn't quite measure up. But what else can we tell about him from the symbols around him? Well, he got to that water, the water where Jesus is and has blessed. He got there by a straight and narrow path. So that tells us that he is a follower of Jesus. And remember, Christopher died at the year that uh, Anthony the Great was born. And the Bible itself wasn't put together until like sometime halfway through the life of Anthony the Great. So there was no Bible at the time of St. Christopher. So this hermit is not a monk, even though he looks like a monk, because monks hadn't been invented and there were no strict followers of the Bible, but there were people who followed the various Gospels that were floating around. And there were many, but apparently St. Christopher got a hold of a hermit who taught him the one where you are supposed to do, make amends for past sins, and, uh, and also do good for people, that the king was coming back to judge those that fed the hungry and clothed the naked and visited those imprisoned and welcomed the stranger. All those works, works, works. And that's what one of the things that makes St. Christopher important to heretics is he had no fixed faith because there wasn't one, but he did have works, and it's the works, works, works that are blessed by Jesus. But this monk doesn't practice. He goes up to the living water, he drinks from the living water, but he is also compared to that dog. The dog does the same thing. The dog is a symbol of blind faith. He is an animal. And so the symbols are comparing that hermit who wanted that life of fasting and meditation to the dog. He has brought himself up to the living waters of the teachings of Jesus, but he hasn't himself gone in. Whereas, of course, St. Christ Christopher is, uh, well, he's up to his ankles anyway, in the living water of Jesus. In part two, I'll explain all the symbols surrounding our hermit there. But just know for now that symbols come in pairs. And our St. Christopher here is a single symbol because he can't be broken down into smaller symbols. If you take away the baby Jesus, he isn't St. Christopher. He's just a guy in a puddle. So that is one symbol. And since it's Famously, St. Christopher, he's surrounded by symbols that all relate to his life. So it's a bit of a puzzle that you're meant to solve, but it's all integrated. And you can solve the puzzle by using our seven keys to understanding the symbols of Hieronymus Bosch, because that's what he used to paint the thing in the first place. And I want to leave you with one last little bit. And notice way up in the top, there's a man. He's gone out on a limb. He's gathering honey from a beehive, and he's naked. I'll give you a perfectly reasonable explanation next time on Understanding the Symbols of Hieronymus Bosch. Thanks for watching.